Okay, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Hubert. Can I please get a confirmation that you can hear me and um, see the chart on the screen? Just waiting for some confirmations to come in before I continue. Good, there's the first one, thanks. Great, okay. So, um, so yes, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Hubert Miranda. I'm um, here on behalf of um, Trading Strategy Guides to um, introduce you to the uh, Strike Trader Elite system. Um, I will basically give you uh, uh, an introduction to h how the system works and um, sort of give you my uh, opinion and, and view on it. Um, so I've been asked to kind of review it and to to tell you kind of the ins and outs of it. So um, that's what I will be doing. Um, if you've got any questions along the way, please type them into the chat. Uh, hi, Dennis. Yes, this is live. <laughs> Um, definitely live to you so you can ask me any questions you like um, and yeah so we'll just take it one step at a time and feel free to interrupt me whenever uh, whenever you uh, can't keep up with something or you've got some question and we take it from there Okay, dokie. So, um, so basically, the the strike trade elite system, as you see it here on the screen. Let me just sorry, I'll just switch you over quickly on my screen so you can see this better. Okay. So basically, um. The strike system is what I would call a momentum-based strategy. Um, so what that means is that the, the key um, principle that it relies on is, if I go back to my chart, basically um, it's trying to catch the, the start of new momentum So when price starts to move in one direction, it's trying to catch a signal by by measuring that through its its propriety indicator down here, and um, it, we're trying to to get into a trade once um, some new momentum direction is established, and the aim is to essentially aim for quite short term goals, um, short term targets. So they're quick in and out trades, um, and um, that's the core of it. And it's it sounds simple, and in many ways it is simple, but it doesn't mean it's a bad strategy. Um, it just you've got to ha um, be aware of certain elements of how to handle it in order to not burn yourself. Okay, hi, uh, Damien. I've just really started right now. Um, the, basically, the system I showed the screen here. It's um, a momentum-based strategy, which is good for small time frame trading. So it's good for for five minutes um, or lower. And the reason for that is because we're really just trying to catch um, a kind of a, a, a push, an impulsive move. Of price and we're not necessarily going to wait for a price to move a, a huge amount in one direction if it does it's great but um, because it's really uh, based on on this one core principle and the the kind of the statistics around it as to how many trades go right versus how many trades go wrong um, it, it lends itself for this shorter time frame trading um, if you're going to deal you you it, you can use it on bigger time frames as well, but I would then personally um, 
no doubt add extra refinement elements to it, which I will talk about later on. And um, but yeah, th basically th this is really the key of it. So it's it's great for short term um, trading, simply because it's we're just looking for a, a reaction, a reaction, reactionary move in the market. Uh, rather than uh, a, a clear technical reversal or anything like that. Um, Robert says there's no audio. Now, I think everybody else... Oh, hang on. People are saying that there's no audio. I see now two comments with no audio. Mm, that is strange. Because it should... You should hear me quite loud and clear can I can I get some more confirmation please can you hear me now again or can you still not hear me Robert and Mahesh okay get an okay from Arena Dennis says it's good all right so Guys, then uh, the two of you who are not hearing me, you might just have to check your own audio settings because everything seems to be fine here. Okay, so just let me talk you through the basics of it. Um, the system basically predominantly consists of this indicator down here, which is the, the Stride Trader Elite Pulse indicator. And this is, will give us our momentum reading. So, as you can see here, um, when price starts to uh, create some upwards momentum, you start to get uh, a, a reading above the zero line here. So here the, the central dotted line is the, is the zero line of the momentum reading. And so once we get some momentum to the upside, you start to getting these green bars and they're building up. And it basically th with the reading that you see down there, it's, it's kind of a, a complex mathematical um, structure that comes up with, with a reading, uh, a visual reading that's gauging basically the power in the moves. Um, so, and as as the move fades, like here, you start to see the move, the upper move is slowing a bit. And eventually when that gets too much, you start to see um, a drop here as well. So the reading goes down and the bars go darker. And uh, anybody who's familiar with, with other kind of um, oscillator type indicators, That's right. Um, it looks pretty similar. Um, it, it this I think this indicator incorporates um, a few different mathematical uh, features to to gauge momentum, but they are in principle similar. Um, but what this whole system indicator does is it uh, gives you basically entries and stops and targets. Um, so it, it tells you actually where to place pending orders, etc. And I'll talk you through that. So I just wanted to give you, just to quick, quickly talk you through the main indicator down here. So, so basically yeah, you've got these, these rises and falls in momentum. And of course, if it, if the momentum turns completely the other way. So here, then of course it drops below the zero line and it turns red. Oh, hang on, I actually got to do that. <laughs> Sorry, so if the, um, the video quality is very poor, um, this the webinar will be recorded as well. And so it, it, if, if, if you find that the video quality is too, uh, too poor right now, um, 
we will upload it with a high quality uh, recording so uh, my apologies if it is a bit blurry um, but there will be you can go back to the video later on and it will be and it will be clear by then and that was actually a good point because now I started my recording <laughs> so um, so this is basically the, the principle of this um, indicator and um, if if once we go, if we go into the settings here you you get quite a lot of settings that you can adjust but um, for the outset if you just want to start off just keep it as the default settings um, because that gives you here a certain sensitivity in the in this um, momentum indicator and then in terms of the the system itself how it gives you the signals that's where uh, these three settings here come in so where it says here how many points for the late entry is where the setting is of when where you get a marker line of when to enter potentially a trade and the initial stop loss value points is basically a marker line that uh, tells you where to put your stop loss and the initial take profit line is a setting of how many pips away the um, the the target will be set, and so as a default from the um, creator of the system, it it's kept at, at 120 points, so there would be 12 pips delayed entry, 150 points or 15 pips stop loss, and 30 pips uh, tar a target. So, there's basically two ways that you can go about this strategy. And if I, I show you this here, either you um, you rely on the statistics of it, and you really can say you can use the system um, without having to think, without having to really analyze very much, and just simply follow uh, the 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 signals that it um, creates, which I'll talk you through. So I'll, I'll give you the details of that. Um, and that is fine. And obviously, it's understandable if you don't want to just rely on somebody's uh, statistical claim. Um, so you can, in a way, try out the signals on a demo account or on really small risk at first. To see if if you find that it, it works well enough for you, that's one way. The other way is you can include some uh, signal refinement or extra filters, which I'll teach you, so that um, you will apply some of your own, a little bit of your own analysis to it, so you can essentially choose the best signals and filter out um, not so great signals. Okay, so um, so I wanted to show you here, for example, on the um, pound US dollar. The way it happens here, I'm I'm, tell, I'm gonna show you what these little lines mean, and it looks a bit complicated right now, but it's actually not that complicated. Basically, um, there's one indicator. So the one, the indicator that you see down here, that's the um, the pulse indicator. Signals with that. So if I if I go if I zoom out here, you can see that you've got these lines happening here which I'll clarify for you what they mean. And basically they will map out all the previous signals that appeared in 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 a previous price action based on the settings that you that you set it. So that's a really handy feature because what you can do is you can choose a certain setting, you can choose the default setting or other settings, and then see, okay, how many trades would have gone right, how many would have gone wrong. And so to show you this with um, the latest example here, so whenever you get a vertical line like here, you get this 
red vertical line. This means that um, the beginning of the signal has started. So from that point, the um, the system recognizes that there might be a trade setup. We haven't got one quite yet, but it's about to happen. And what it is, what it picks up on, is that the minute the momentum goes, um, if I zoom in here, you can see that better. Once momentum starts to go in one direction and produces a a reading beyond the 0 0.3 line on that momentum indicator, it will plot the line because it's the potential start of new momentum in one direction. And um, sorry, I'm just seeing here a question in the chat. Um, do you need to install the three indicators? Yes, preferably you install all of them. Um, what I'm talking about mainly now will be pulse and signal. Uh, the push indicator is is a little bit more, um, gives you more information, but I will, um, I will briefly touch upon it, but not so much. So mainly the pulse and the signal indicator. Um, now Jay-Z, sorry, I just saw your question now. I am answering it. I am, have been asked to review this um, strategy so I I have not traded it myself for more than two weeks and I've just uh, tested it myself um, but I have been asked to basically t tell people the ins and outs introduce people to it and tell you the ups and downs so if you don't like that uh, I haven't traded myself that's okay but I'm telling you how it is and you can take it or leave it so um back to where i was so basically what we, we're getting the very beginning of new momentum here and what then happens is that the system will plot a yellow line and when if it's a current signal it will be a solid yellow line because it's currently a, an old signal you will just get a some dots here yellow dots but essentially, based on the settings that this indicator is in, so we're saying from the the beginning of the signal, when it picks up of the momentum indicator, 12 pips below that will be your entry signal. And basically what this system is trying to do here is it's trying to um, get confirmation that the momentum that is getting picked up here in the bottom indicator has really follow through so that's why we're putting a delay in the entry um, in order to is where we're putting a delay in the entry in order to get some more confirmation that the momentum is really going in our direction so what that yellow line then does and I'll do that for you now so that you see how that would look in real if it happens right now so what do you get you get a yellow line here which then tells you to place a pending order at that level so you would then then simply for example if you use metatrader 4 you would simply right mouse click click on trading and uh, you would click on, in this case, it would be a sell stop, right? Um, it doesn't give me that option because, of course, price is broken lower already in this particular case. Whoops, sorry about that. So in this case, price is broken lower, but you would click here basically where the line is, trading, and then it would could it would just sell here, sell stop, which basically means that Um, as soon as price hits that level, uh, the order will get filled and you're in the trade. It will also plot a red line, which you've got um, red dots for, which would be 12 pips 
away from from this line I have 15 pips away from the line from your entry so that would show up as a red line like so and that's telling you where your stop would go and it would then also plot a green line where your first target would be so basically it gives you time to set your pending order once the order gets filled um, the red uh, the yellow line switches to uh, another color specified obviously in your settings um, so originally it's white which means essentially that now the trade would be active then price moves and um, once the the target gets hit it then also automatically um, rec moves the the red recommended stop loss line to say break even and when it hits a second target it moves the line further to in this case it was this point I think and so essentially the trade would uh, go on until it either uh, it, 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 it can, will continue to set the next target I think um, the same amount of distance so in this case it would be 30 pips um, or either it will stop you out with your trailing stop and in this case it probably just about missed the the second target and then gone back up here and it would have stopped out here in, in some profit based on your trailing stop now so the reason why uh, the system has a default setting of um, like 15 pips stop loss and 30 pips um, target is because it's trying to recommend a two to one reward to risk ratio so you're trying to aim for um, twice as big a target as your risk and hence that default and it's true obviously if you use 50 pips stop loss and a 100 pip target that would also be a two to one reward to risk ratio um, but because we're dealing with um, small time frames um, it's better to stay with with smaller targets so this is really the core essence of it and um, I can just show you now a bit how that would have worked historically so in a way it's showing you the history here you can see we have, have first the yellow dotted line the original stop loss here of the signal that started at this vertical line uh, then the order obviously got filled we had the white line uh, appear then price moved down here was your original target you see these two uh, green dots just above uh, the line here once that was hit this this stop loss was moved to here um, hence you've got the red dotted line here it moved further down obviously if you, you could have exited manually once you had further target because at this case in this case you would have been at a four to one reward to risk ratio so that would have been quite a good time to pull out manually potentially especially if it comes so close to the target um, and then yeah it got stopped out and this is the end of the trade hence no more dotted lines from here and so ever since then we haven't had another signal why because you can see momentum here has built up and it's starting to fade it's starting to become less and until we get a reset as in price coming back here at least to the zero line or even crossing over and then coming back down we wouldn't get another sell signal so you can see how it's really trying to catch that initial momentum first um, you can then here for example if we're now looking at the previous signal which was a buy signal which is why you've got a green vertical line so uh, you have the beginning of momentum here uh, it's it, which is why it's starting to to trigger the 
the mapping of the signal. And so your entry line would have been here at the yellow bar. And you can see how obviously price did not trigger for quite some time. Here at this point, it finally did trigger. And the stop loss would have been here, 15 pips from here, from, from your entry. Just making sure that that is the case. Yeah, that's right, 15 pips. And initial target was here. And you can see with this move, it actually hit the target. Then it would have recommended you to move your stop loss from down here up to here to lock in some profits. Um, price then went all the way up to here, but came back down and would have stopped you out here with probably a one-to-one one one reward. Or you, if you wanted, you could have exited somewhere closer to um, up to the previous target. Now there are some instruction videos that come with uh, that tell you all of that, how the system works. Um, once you get the indicators, there's several videos that explain all of that in quite nice detail. So what I want to focus on mainly today is to give you actually some additional tools, what you can use then in addition to, um, in a way, refine the system and, and possibly even make it better than just um, following the signals as and when they appear. So this, what I'm just telling you now, for example, is what I meant earlier um, here that, that basically it's, you just follow it based on the statistics that and you rely on it that it's going to create enough more wins than than losses and the the other refinement options with what i will talk about now so there's like six points that i've thought you could incorporate to to make it a possibly a, a stronger system yet and um, some of it is already mentioned also in the videos that come as a default with the system. But um, uh, some of the things I've also added myself. So let's start talking about those unless there are any questions right now. Is everything clear to everybody? Just waiting to see if there's any questions appear in the chat, but if not, I'll continue on straight away. Okay, so no questions. I'll um, I'll just continue then. So, okay, my first tip, which is actually already um, shown here, is that I would only use this for short-term signals myself, um, because if you like go to higher time frames. Uh, what you start to happen is you, in order for price to create a signal, everything is obviously on a bigger scale. So your targets will be bigger, your stop loss will be bigger, uh, your delayed entry will be bigger. And um, it basically means that price, in order for the trade to go right, has to cross more, cover more distance. And because it's a simple momentum-based strategy, you will price obviously will inevitably have to cross into more through more support and resistance areas and that's where i think it actually works best to trade it on small time frames on a small scale because then we in a way have to rely less on price breaking through these support and resistance areas um because if you're going to do th if you're going to do that and say okay i'm going to trade a bigger move, I'm going to look at uh, a chart and say I I'm wanting to catch a bigger swing, then you definitely need to add, put more analysis in 
and in a way then it's might as well you, you might as well trade a, a different system but this is really for for short-term gains uh, that quick in and out trade so hence i would probably think stick to the five minute chart as your um as your as your main trading time frame with the with the settings that are provided in the instruction videos this is not just in this video um which i showed you here so if you go to the properties again those um those original settings here 12 pips 15 pips 30 pips so that's the first thing um the the next thing on my list is to include horizontal support and resistance levels and trend lines to filter out signals yeah um david that's right s r means support and resistance levels so what i mean by that is obviously if you just look at a five minute chart uh fairly close up and waiting for these signals you're kind of blind to what's happening on a bigger scale you don't know if there is a support or resistance in the way of anything or not um, so say for example let's have a look at this this trade here this buy trade and um, I will make a marker line at this high just a white line so the way you do that is you in order to map out your support and resistance areas, you have to go to a bigger time frame, quite a much bigger time frame, four hour chart, daily chart. These are all important, um, much more significant, um, obviously dimensions of a chart. And you can see, you can what you can do very simply is you, you take a line and you try to map price levels where there have been multiple reactions to it. So ideally you want to have precise hits where the candles make a precise hit exactly at a level on different occasions. But the, a bit of wiggle room if the candle closes at that line and some other points create a precise hit, that's also fine. So in this case, for example, I can see we had um, a hit of that price level right here. Then we had several more hits here they were pretty precise one pierced through but that's okay um we have another candle close the wicks went through but the candle closed pretty much at this level and we've got another level here so to me this is a significant support and resistance level based on the four hour chart so i'll keep that simply on my chart and um for future reference because if if I'm wanting to buy and my target area would be kind of beyond that resistance line, then I would probably not take that signal that the strike, uh, strike system produces because I would be cautious that another bounce would appear at that level. Now, this is, of course, not the only level. So you can go and try and find some kind of previous... Uh, support level as well so here for example I'm looking at this hit here and I'm looking at these several four hour candles hitting this level here and bouncing and in a way here as well again so you can leave that line in for example and that's how you go along you the same thing for the daily chart and you can see actually quite nicely how how on the daily chart this line that I had drawn the support line here based on the four hour chart candles is actually coinciding with the previous support as well here from December 2017 and of course that makes the level even more significant and um, the same here so for example a a strong daily resistance level might be somewhere here or say yeah let's I quite like this level because I've got a precise hit here followed by many precise hits here again 
so this is what I mean by horizontal mapping out horizontal support and resistance and also trend lines so if we go maybe back to our four hour chart and um, you can just start to connect oh, hang on <laughs> it must be in black color I make that maybe bright blue or something like that so you can just start connecting the tops of candles with each other and just drawing them uh, you can actually set that to array in parameters which means that they will just go on for infinitely in the chart and you can just set them and see if they eventually become relevant again so obviously we've got numerous hits of that uh, trend line here of course it gets broken here but it doesn't matter that it becomes irrelevant you can keep those in the chart as well and obviously right now it's where price currently is which is here this trend line isn't um, of any imp relevance because price is far away from it but I'm just giving you an example of how how you can add trend lines as well I mean if I follow this trend line perhaps this might become relevant sooner so for example if if I show you this here if price continues to prices here and if it were to continue to fall and it would start to give me a sell signal close to this trend line then I for example I would be again more cautious to actually use that sell signal because even though it's not obviously not the most incredible trend line, I mean longest trend line ever, it's still a significant level with quite a few hits, and um, so I would res I would bear that in mind and see that as a potential support area, and because we're dealing with small such small margins of only a 15 pip stop and a 30 pip target that this would be something that I would be respecting so and of course then so what what will happen is that once you map those on a bigger time frame uh, these lines will just be on your chart and so when a signal appears then you will have that as a reference and say okay hang on if the signal is within the area of these lines then um, pause for a moment zoom out see do you think there's really um, enough space and and then make your decision based on that so that was our first tip then the next tip is um, identify price direction with the stronger momentum on a higher time frame and decide to only trade signals in that direction so that's another sort of filter you can add so by that I mean uh, you want to go say to the the one hour chart perhaps and you want to consider okay in the over the recent period of time where has been the stronger momentum has it has the stronger momentum been to the upside or the downside and well obviously no doubt recently the momentum is very strong to the downside and if we compare that to the move uh, the upwards moves there seems to be a, generally a stronger momentum to the downside and how can you see that even you don't even have to use um, an indicator like this um, to to gauge momentum. You can just look at the candles, and that's sort of kind of what I'm drawing you to. Let me go to the four-hour time frame. That might become a bit better because we have more more data in a way here. So what you see here that one our our red candles, our bearish candles, they have been the stronger ones generally whenever there's been 
a, a bullish move with creating uh, bullish candles, they tend to be smaller, have more wicks. Obviously, here was the most extreme. Um, the momentum was obviously the strongest, and you can, of course, the, the momentum indicator is showing this here. But even so, the once we had a, a more significant low here, the move upwards was not showing a massive amount of momentum. So overall, you can just say, okay, the momentum is the, ma the stronger momentum is still to the downside. Therefore, in this particular pair and the pound dollar, I'm going to align with that direction. And that's just in a way common sense. You know, you you don't want to try and go against a dominant force. You want to try and align with the dominant force. So, and especially now that we've got some new candles with, with strong momentum like this, uh, it's probably wise to stay for the moment um, more mainly focused on sell signals as and when they appear. So that's something you can do. You can map that on higher time frames as well, just by looking at the candles, saying, "Okay, which direction is producing st strong big candles, and more of them, and which direction is producing small choppy candles, like like here, like the blue ones here." Okay, then. The next point is session timing. So I'm saying here use strike roughly from two hours before London open until the end of the New York session. End of NY. Um, so what I'm saying here, the reason I'm saying it's best to use it during the London session or the New York session is because they they are the main uh, trading hours where you get the most um, liquidity, the most volume, the most price movement. Um, if you trade during like times like now, for example, it's it's the very very start of the Asian session, so Tokyo isn't even open yet. It's just uh, New Zealand and Australia. Um, the moves that you get during that time, they don't have any follow through. Uh, they they generally just price, like you see here, um, we had, where was it? So the new day started here. I think London, uh, sorry, New York closed sometime here around this area. And what's most likely going to happen now during the Asian session or the, during the coming hours is you'll get some movement, you'll probably get some correction, but price will be more choppy during this time. And um, when Tokyo opens, you might get a move in a direction, but a lot more often than not, it doesn't have follow through. And because we're looking to trade on these small time frames, looking to catch small momentum, um, we ideally we want to see a bit more consistency than the Asian sh session usually provides. Uh, so that's why I recommend trading once London opens um, or a couple of hours before, because you get already some interesting volatility. And um, or when when New York opens. So that's why I've written this here on on the time uh, on the sheet. Now I said roughly two hours before London open, uh, because like I said, volatility picks up already then, and um, you often get like moves, like with the start, the exact start of the sessions. There are important transitions, and in a way, if you are in a trade two hours before London open, that's fine. But in a way, ideally, I'd, I would want to be almost already at least a break even by the time it comes to London open itself because you can get like an initial, like a jerking movement when, when the new traders get going. And and there can be initially some, some, some change in the dynamic. And the same, of course, when New York opens. So, London is already open, then at some point New York kicks in and you tend to get a 
a change of dynamic then often. So if you've got, for example, an open trade that started during the London session, then I would try and wrap it up or at least put it to break even when it comes to the New York open session and then start a new trade if you want based on a new signal once New York is open. I hope that's that's p pretty much clear. I can give you also a tip here for um, a link. Uh, so this link here uh, www.worldtimezone.com forward slash markets 24.php uh, It's a very handy little <clears throat> site because it basically shows you the time of each of the markets. So LSE is the London Stock Exchange, NYSE New York Stock Exchange, um, TSE is Tokyo Stock Exchange. You've got a list of, of them here. They tell you the trading hours when they open and and these labels uh, once you refresh the page so if i now refresh the page you can see at the moment it says new zealand stock exchange is open everything else is closed and that will sort of you know change throughout the day so this is if you if you trying to keep a track of the session times this is a really handy website uh hi red knight um You've missed uh, <laughs> quite a bit, unfortunately, but this will be recorded and um, therefore you can listen to it all uh, afterwards again. Um, but you just have to jump in and, and kind of flow with where we are not right now. Okay. Then tip number four for refinement. Focus on pairs you personally like and pairs that move fast. So I don't know about you, but I found that there seem to be certain pair, uh, currency pairs or, or other instruments that, that, um, that just work well for you. So you might find, I don't know, the Euro dollar works really well for you, but maybe the, the US yen you often have, um, not so good results with or maybe you find that some kind of cross maybe the the euro new zealand dollar or something that you always tend to get good results with that if that's something the case that you've noticed in your own trading then then use it on the on those pairs because i'm not sure exactly why why that is maybe that the way a certain pair behaves suits a, a certain person's psychology more and therefore they get better results if that's the case, just stick to those pairs. You don't have to trade hundreds of different pairs with that strategy. Um, and and the other recommendation is that you uh, also choose pairs that, that move a good amount of pips. So some pairs, like for example, the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar is pretty slow moving. Like it's um, it doesn't move as many pips or the, the euro um, pound exchange rate is also one that does moves pretty slow whereas um, generally all the euro pairs move pretty fast and all the pound pairs move pretty fast just not the euro pound but uh, for, so for example the if I go back to my charts here briefly the euro New Zealand dollar for example generally moves pretty fast you get a lot of pip movement so that's why it's good for for the system um, or the pound Australian dollar these crosses they will move well but of course the majors the two majors um, move really well too the pound USD and the euro USD so that's an extra little tip and um, then okay uh, avoid small time frame setups during important news events so It's good that you to keep a track on really important news. So go to one of the, you know, the Forex websites like maybe Forex Factory or or investing.com and and go to your economic calendar and just keep an eye on 
if there's any significant events scheduled for the day. Obviously, like for example, yesterday we had the the, the ECB, the European Central Bank um, interest rate decision, and no doubt we had quite some volatility and then obviously just a big break breakdown. Um, I would personally avoid trading around these times because you get obviously whipsaw and you can get stopped out because we're dealing with these small time frames with small stops and targets. Um, so yeah, avoid around it. You can trade after or maybe, I don't know, up to an hour or so before the event, but um, I would definitely, I would stay away from the immediate time around the event. And then here I just made a point saying use the strike signals indicator to backtest different settings until you feel comfortable yourself. So what I mean by that is, um, like I said, you can, once you get the strike trade elite signals indicator, which I've got already on my chart, which is showing me these previous signals. So here it's that's what the that signals indicator does. Um if I go to the settings now. So obviously the settings right now are such that you get a signal once the reading of the pulse indicator goes beyond zero point three from the zero line. And then the signals are based on these 12 pips, 15 pips stop loss, um, 30 pips target. Check, go oh, do the back testing, go back and see, okay, how many trades have gone right? How many trades have gone wrong? If you are already working with indicators or like momentum indicators and so on, you can just play around with the target and stops and um, and see if, if anything works better, right? So if you if you say, okay, I want to see if I delay my entry by 20 pips and make a stop loss value of 25, uh, oops, I have to do, of course, points. So make that 200, 250, and then the profit, take profit, say would be 50 pips. And you do that then of course you're going to get different signals um, because your, your entry is delayed and obviously your stops and targets are different. And you just see, okay, do I get better results with that or not? Um, I think there will be more support videos being produced as time goes by. And of course there's also the, the forum, the, the, the Strike Trade Elite forum where ideas can be exchanged. So that's a good place to, to try these things out. Um, but just to start out with, I would leave it at the initial recommended default, um, which I have set here and then, and then just take it from there. Now. <clears throat> See, I wanted to show you an example of how this also how you can use support and resistance levels and trend lines in your in your trades. So in this euro dollar trade here, for example, here it, we've it registered a buy possibility from this point onwards, and um, and so it was recommending. Okay, you entered a trade here. If you want to improve your signals, obviously I've talked about drawing these lines. In this situation, what I thought was quite nice um, as an example was we have this. Sorry, I should go back to the higher time frames to show you what I mean. I drew this this line, this resistance trend line, based on these touches here, these bounces. So price went down, tested again, down, tested again, down. Here. We started to get a breakthrough and a retest of that line and price started to establish itself above that line. Now once you get that happen 
and of course on the smaller time frame this is what it looked like on the smaller time frame oh sorry guys so on the smaller time frame here you've got the white line you can see the break the retest so in a way I quite like that signal because it um, it happened to coincide with this break of the support uh, this resistance trend line and because price was now um, trading above it I was thinking yeah I'm quite happy to take that signal because there is room to the upside because this a resistance trend line has been broken and so I was really happy with that signal and it would have been a, actually a good trade um, so it would have triggered here your stop loss was here and it went up and pretty much see of course you want to be also um, present for the for, for the trade you know right price goes up then you start to get um, some downward movements coming in. And of course, we've got this big uh, news event. So in a way, that would have probably uh, meant best not to take it because we're getting too close to the news. But if this wasn't the case, if you just look at it like so, um, once you start to get quite big momentum to the downside again and it hasn't quite reached the target, um, I would definitely move my, my stop loss manually to break even, even though the system probably won't have told you that yet because it hasn't quite reached the first target. And that's also doing a bit of manual trade management is also shown in the instruction videos, videos that come with the indicator. So yeah, there's. I just wanted to show you how this kind of works with the um, support and resistance trend lines that you can map in. Okay, I think that was probably my last tip for the time being. Um, have you got any questions right now? Did, could anybody, everybody follow me? Just waiting to see if there's any uh, comments or uh, questions arising in the chat. See, this was actually quite a good, um, this was <laughs> probably quite an excellent trade in some ways. Like it kept on uh, coming down and down so far, of course. And uh, you've hit like l lots and lots of targets here. Uh, David, yes, that's correct. I, th I think it's probably best for fast moving pairs um, so that you can get these 30 pip movements, you know, um, fairly often rather than it wobbling around like in the middle of nowhere. Um, also, an important thing is add your spread um, to the to your stop loss settings. So if the default is 12, um, uh, sorry, if the default is 15 pips for your stop loss, then you want to add whatever your broker's spread is to that so that you don't get stopped out too early. Um, so like say if you have a two pip spread or something on an instrument, then you want to make your, and you want a 15 pip stop loss, then you really have to set your stop loss to at least 17 pips. Also, um, another thing you might bear in mind is like, say, if the setting, say, for example, in this case, um, 
you get this move you, you get a get a strong move so after the news and then you you get the signal but you can see this it seems possibly a bit tight here you can gauge if is there some previous again a level just on a small time frame it doesn't have to you don't have to go far back but you can so for example gauge here okay where was there some previous resistance that could act as a good stop loss setting you can see like here we've we had quite a bit of resistance so in some ways you could say well okay i know the system's telling me put my stop loss here but this level slightly higher is actually more a significant resistance and maybe it's better to put my stop loss here if there's enough room for my target and i still get a better than a one to one reward to risk ratio like at least say a 1.5 to one uh, then that's still good so you can you know make those little tweaks so apply a bit of your own analysis and intelligence to it and i think you'll get better results that way even more Okay, well, unless there's any other questions, I think um, I shall wrap it up for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I will still be briefly around um, if there are any final questions. But other than that, I wish you good trading. And I will, I think, make sure that you get this this little sheet that I've showed you here. And this my, with my notes as well. And um, wish you all the best. Thank you.